Always nice to have Chalk Talk off the Seahawks' best win of the year. And in fact, in Blue 42 this week, I talked about some of the dynamics of this play, but always nice to put it on the whiteboard and get to see it live out. The Seahawks are in 22 personnel. When you hear 12 personnel, 22, 10, remember it's always two backs, two tight ends. So they start this play in 22 personnel. This is in the second quarter. They're up just 6-3. They've moved the ball, but they've not been able to get into that end zone. A couple field goals up 6-3 in the second quarter. And remember, this comes off, well, another play I could diagram, the run play right before this where Marshawn gashes Atlanta for over 30 yards. So they get into this field in this territory. And anytime I'm doing my broadcasts, between the 40-yard lines is a great place for offensive coordinators to call some of these trick plays, to call their shot plays. And this one's been in the playbook all season long. In fact, in many of our Monday conversations with Pete, both on and off the air, we talk about a number of these concepts. And when they call this what we'll label a trick play or a shot play, they want a particular look. They want the defense to be in the op most opportune look and the most opportune defense to take advantage of it. So what else did you notice about this play? Well, about seven minutes prior in the game, they run the same concept. They're gonna motion their big second tight end over. You've got a tight split by Jermaine Curse. You've got two backs and you can see it right here with his defensive end. He's thinking toss crack. And you know who else is? This strong safety who ends up coming on a blitz. But seven minutes earlier, they run the same play as the run play, not the double pass flea flicker component. Why do they do that seven minutes earlier? So they can see exactly what Atlanta is going to do defensively. And if you've learned one thing in these chalk talks over the last, I don't know what, three years we've done them, I sure hope you're starting to look at these guys because there's no greater tell in football when you're playing this position and you've got to make the decision of go or no go. It's based on what these safeties do. <clears throat> and for this, <coughs> Double pass, they wanted a single safety, a single high safety. If Atlanta had stayed in two safeties with this motion, then you would have seen Russell Wilson step back from the line and check it. They would not have run this play. The minute Russell Wilson sees the strong safety come down, okay, and this free safety get to the middle of the field, single high, he knew he had a shot at this. And in fact, the safety comes on the blitz. Jermaine does a great job. <coughs> He doesn't blow it early. He seals the deal and gets some leverage on the safety. Everybody does their job. Marshawn, you're taught one thing on this throw. Don't be perfect. Don't try to throw a laser. Don't try to be pretty. Just get the ball back in whatever capacity you can to Russell. And a nice job by Jean-Pierre to come out and seal the block as well. And, Mar and Marshawn does just enough. The duck comes this way. The 58-yarder in the air gets right there. And it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Tom Moore. My old offensive coordinator in Indianapolis said, my job in the NFL as a play caller is to get you one-on-one. -on -one. Your job is to win it. They get one-on-one, -on -one, they get the single high safety. Russell Wilson throws an absolute seed in a dart, give Jermaine Curse a lot of credit for fighting through contact with that safety, but everything, formation, personnel, seven minutes prior, you're running the play diagnosing and figuring out what the tells are defensively. All of that goes into what was a very significant touchdown and a touchdown that Atlanta could never overcome offensively.